What up YouTube, it's Two Fat Guys Polis, and before we get to our video, we wanted to let you know about our milestone giveaway for a thousand subscribers. We are giving away an amazing Spider-Man issue number four. This is the first appearance of Silk, the original Sin tie-in. I'm sure everybody is familiar with this book. Um, this is a like CBCS 9.8. Oh yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, Big boy. This book is much hotter than it was when we first bought it for the show. Yep. That's true. <laughs> you insist yeah. on still giving it away, and I'm very happy to do it. <laughs> you can tell that he is not. But anyway, we are giving this away when we hit a thousand subscribers. Kick ass, key issue, first appearance of Silk is someone's going to win this book. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and let's get to the video, shall we? Hey, yo, Nate. What's up? Did you know that the first French fry was not fried in France? <sighs> was it fried in America? It was fried in Greece. Oh, I don't like yeah. that one. I don't like that one. It's pretty good. No, you're. It's, it's good. Pretty. Because it, it, you get it because it's grease. Yeah. Right? Yes. Like, like it's a double entendre. A entendre. <laughs> okay, let's start the show. Okay. What up, YouTube? It's Two Fat Guys Pulis, and we've got another new comic book day video for you for the week of February fifteenth. I hope your Valentine's Aww. Day was. Whatever you needed it to be. Whatever you needed it to be. Because it's a fake holiday. Well, that's true. Okay. Anyway. Sell you cards. It said sell you, and not the kind that you collect. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> we've got a, you know, another, it's been weird. February has been weird. We're already, the, the, what, the third week into February, and it's still kind of itty bitty. You know, we haven't had... You know this this gigantic week that has been prophesized for the week of uh, or for the month of February. I feel like it's coming though. But it should, it should be that being said, we've got some cool books this week, so let's get into it. First up, we have Avengers Forever, <clears throat> the f seventh part of the Avengers Assemble uh, event. Um, mm -hmm. It feels like this event is getting back on track. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. We, you know, the Doom Planet <clears throat> has been introduced, uh, which is very, very cool. A planet full of dooms. Uh, we we figured out that Avenger Prime is Loki, and it's just getting very Jason Aaron-y in in a good way. Um, so I'm hoping that we can just tie this thing off with a little bow, and we're we're, we're inching towards the conclusion of this this massive Avengers run. Um, and so I, I just hope it ends well. You know, I hope yeah. it doesn't it doesn't flounder and deflate. I will say that I personally think Jason Aaron has a good track record for endings, so I think you will be pleased. All right, well, I'm looking forward to it. Also, this cover's dope. It is pretty dope. Talking about another cool cover, we got Captain Marvel issue number 46, uh, part four of the Revenge of the Brood. Something is going on with the Brood. We're having a crossover with the X-Men. This is part four. We're going to get part six in X-Men, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> this has been fun. There's this little mystery going on, and hardcore X readers are trying to <clears throat> essentially figure out what the hell is going on with the Brood, because we thought we had mm -hmm. them under control, but doesn't seem to be that way right now. It does not. It does not at all. This has been um, in a in a Captain Marvel run that is full of great arcs. This is probably my my favorite arc that we've done favorite so arc. far. Yeah. So I yeah I'd say second favorite. I really okay. liked the arc that I jumped on, which she was being yeah. controlled by the Vox yeah. Supreme. That was pretty dope. So I still need to read that one. That's also, cool. random tidbit of sad facts for you. Uh -oh. Um, I think. Issue 46 of Captain Marvel maybe has the very first passable Peach Momoko cover I've ever that I've ever run. Oh, really? You don't like Every it, Every Peach huh? Momoko I've seen, I've gone, I at least want it. And this one wow. I go, I think I'm okay. Wow. It's a right. it's a Planet of the Apes variant, which I'm really not, I just don't care about any of that at all. Okay. All right. Well, you can be, you <laughs> can be wrong. You can be wrong. It's okay oh, to be shit. wrong. Oh, okay. Well... <laughs> All right, after that, we've got Fantastic Four, issue number four from North and Gakul. Uh This <laughs> is the issue that I think we both said, uh, this is the make or break. This is where yeah. we're you know, either going to stay on or jump off. And right now I'm heading towards jumping off. Um, and that has nothing really, anything against North's writing style. I think he's a fine writer, but this story is just not, it's just not doing it for me. It's, it's, uh, 
it's a little flat. Um, even though the hook, <clears throat> you know, the, the hook is definitely building, uh, but I don't feel like it's, uh, I get, I, I see what he's doing. I see what North is doing. Right. And I'm just not excited about it. Unfortunately. Uh, no, I'm not either. And I actually made a pretty bold statement. Um, when we reviewed issue three, I said that if, um, uh, Nicola and Jovin, uh, Jovin, Jover, I can't remember Jovin, I think. Yeah. Anyway, mm. if, if, uh, Ben's kids weren't in issue four, uh, I was off the book. I don't care how good it is. Uh, and it looks like that they probably are. They are listed as the supporting cast for this. So All right. It looks like they're well. probably going to be there. Um, but man, it's just, <laughs> it's such, it's such a, I don't know, a, a deflating feeling. I feel like we were in a good place. Um, you know, Slots Run did a couple of things very bad, but I think they also he left us in a good place. And I think he left he left the situation he left it the situation for North where you could do some real fun things, and it just feels mm-hmm. like we're kind of floundering at issue four, which I feel like we should already be hooked and we should be invested, and we're like we've put this on our pool list. It's not even a week by week basis or month by month basis. So that's. Yeah. I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. Yeah, it's it, a lot is uh, hinged on this issue, for sure. All right. After that, we've got issue twelve of Otley and Cates's uh, Donny Cates's Hulk run. Even though Otley is doing the writing and the uh, you know uh, the artwork for it, uh, but Cates is still on on the book, it, or at least he's on the cover. <laughs> um, so he's got you know Otley's got the 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 blueprint. It does again. It it does feel like there is a, it's a ship without its captain right now, and that's not that's nothing against Otley. <clears throat> and I think it's more of the foresight as readers. We know that this run is ending soon, and it's probably going to end fairly comically, which is weird to say because the whole concept that Donnie put together was pretty radical. Uh, but Ooh. I just, you know, it just feels, I I'm, I'm interested. I want to see how it ends. Uh, but I, I just feel like this is going to be one of those like, and this really didn't happen kind of thing. <laughs> I, it, it really feels like that's about to happen to this run, which is unfortunate. It is. I think that this is, <sighs> uh, probably going to be one of the <laughs> forgotten Hulk runs in the long scheme of things. Yeah. Unfortunately. All right, after that, we have from Gary Jerry, Invincible Iron Man issue number three. Issue two was kind of like a 50-50. Uh, it, it was kind of cool, but then we got this really weird uh, kind of predictable situation with Riri Williams, which is she's got the uh, power rings, the 10 power rings, and she's just using them. There's no... You know, the, I would assume that there's something greater going on that we're not being told, but as of right now, it feels very lazy with Riri. If you take the Riri storyline out, which I don't want to, I want her to be in the story. Um, this whole, someone's trying to assassinate the character of Tony Stark, but also the actual person, Tony Stark. That's actually quite intriguing how they're doing it. So I, you know, actually surprised with this invincible Iron Man run from Gary Cherry. Um, you know, I think we're going to get some crossover with his X-Men uh, once yeah. the Captain Marvel stuff is over, which I'm actually quite I'm looking forward to. Um, you know, this I wouldn't call it a sleeper, but I, I'm still surprised by this run. Yeah, I don't know that I'd give it that much credit, but I'm I'm still on board because of the possible um, the possible run ins that we have with X-Men. Mm-hmm. Um, issue four has Phalong on the cover. And then mm-hmm. issue five has uh, Emma Frost, so Oof. it seems like you know that's something we're uh, a road we're definitely going down. So yeah, I'll I guess I'll stick around for that. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think we'll be all right. <clears throat> all right, after that we have Marauders issue number ten from Orlando. We're going back to another storyline that Orlando picked up at the beginning of his run at issue one. Um, I can't remember the name of the mutant that's on the cover, but they fought him in the annual. Um, and so we're, we're, we're going back to that. Um, I, I, you know, we just got off a massive intergalactic time heist with mutants and we got new <laughs> characters. So I'm looking forward to seeing all of that, those, that storyline either kind of concluding and then continuing on in his run. Uh, but I'm, I'm eager to see where we go next with Orlando's Marauders run because he's been knocking it out of the park and I did not expect it whatsoever. Um, I mean, he's been killing it so much on this book that we picked up his Scarlet Witch run, and that thing is, but it's been pick of the week twice, and there's only two issues. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's killing it right now. 
Yeah, I man, I don't You're know. You're behind I, on this, aren't you? I am very behind on this, and and that's the only reason why I'm not reading it is because I got far behind. It feels impossible to catch up, but I know that I, I know that it just, would be better to just jump on here than it would be to not read that's, it at all. Yeah, I think you should, and then I, you know, take your time, pop up the unlimited, and and just you know casually get into the time heist galactic run because it's right up your alley, dude. Like it's got everything that you're. Well, uh, viewers, I'm going to go ahead and let you experience this first. Um, real time here. This is real time. Oh, oh, I will not be jumping on this issue because uh, I'm not worried about it. Issue 12 has been announced as the final issue. Oh, no. This, this sucks. series is canceled. So is it, is it canceled or? Oh, no. This series is not happening again. <laughs> I think the new comic day video is ruined. Sorry about that. March's <laughs> issue is we thought April we were like, hey, where's Rogers? Uh, nope, yeah. it is now official final issue. I wonder if it's that getting sucks. rebooted. I don't know. I don't know. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> hey, I'm interrupting the video. Do you know why? Because I have something very, very important to tell you. I know you know about our sub giveaway goal of 1,000 subscribers when we give away this. I know you know about this one because we talk about it all the time. But let's talk about when we hit 850 subscribers and what we're giving away then. When we finally hit 850 subscribers, we're giving away this. A CBCS rated 9.8 retail incentive Green Lancer number one with Jon Stewart on the cover. That's right, at 850 subscribers we're giving this bad boy away. So make sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell, and give us a like, and let's get back to the video. All right, jumping into some more X-Books, we have Nightcrawlers, issue number one. Uh, this is, you know, a little three-part series within the Sins of Sinister event by Cy Spurrier. Um, So if there is one book out of the three that's going on in between the Alpha and Omega of Sins of Sinister, this is the one that I'm the most worried about and it's because we've been so disconnected <clears throat> with Cy Spurrier's X-Men runs you know we were very high on it when he first got announced with his Nightcrawler book I can't even remember what it was called um, or it felt like we were establishing the religion of the mutants of Nightcrawler and then it just kind of turned into like a mini very small event with Onslaught and then it's mm -hmm this weird thing with Legion and it's just, it's so like, there's something big going on, but I've been so disconnected that I'm not even reading the current book. Yeah. That I will, Spurrier is writing. I, I would say that if you weren't reading um, X-Men red, you would not get the full potential of the storm and the brotherhood issue. Mm -hmm. um, so I am worried that we're, because we have not been reading Legion that we will not get the full effects of this book. Yeah. Um, However, what we have gotten from Sins of Sinister so far has been really good. So, yeah. And I, I do, I, I know we've had a couple rough bumps, but I still really uh, enjoy Cy Spurrier's writing. So, yeah, I... no doubt. And, and, you know, the Sins of Sinister Alpha was really good. The Storm book was fucking fantastic. So, you know, we'll, we'll keep a, a level head and some high hopes on this book, but I'm just mm. a little worried. Just a little worried. Just a little bit. A little bit. All right. Our last X book of the night is X-Men issue number 19 from Gary Jerry. And we are finally crossing into the brood storyline over here on his end. Um, and I think we're going to start answering these questions about what the hell's going on with the brood. Mm -hmm. um, what happened to the king of the brood uh, brew, right? Brew. Is it brew? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's confusing. Yes. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think, uh, you know, uh, outside of this storyline, we have to wonder, we're getting another X vote in the summer, right? <clears throat> I would assume, I think so. Yeah. I would assume fall of X is going to happen in the fall. Um, so we've got a little bit of time, um, but I, I am definitely, you know, this is one of the big books that got us into this whole thing that got us, got this whole thing started. So um, I, I'm, I'm just a little worried. <laughs> <laughs> just a little worried. I'm not worried at all. We've got Brood. We've got X-Men in space. That's the only place they need to be. I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, you heard it there. 
All right, let's jump over to Independence. We kick it off with Boom Studios Grim issue number eight. Um, mm-hmm. Seven got us back on track. Six was yeah. a little little wonky, but seven got us back on track. And now we're dealing with the fates <clears throat> in issue eight. You know, this book is ramping up very quickly. And, uh, you know, Stephanie Phillips is definitely, um, no, we you know, we love her writing. Don't get us wrong. But this one really, I felt like, cemented. I guess her position when it comes to my top writers and, and what I expect from them mm-hmm. and, and outside of issue six, Grimm has been just a water park of a fun ride. And, and I'm looking forward to obviously eight and seeing how we drive the storyline of now we're following the actual daughter, daughter of death. Mm-hmm. And she has death literally coming after her. You know, and and the and the fates have no way of controlling her. They can't break her thread. There's a lot of shit going on in this book. Yeah, yeah, there really is. Um, I, yeah, th- this is one of the flagship books that I think is showing how dominant Boom is in the independent <clears throat> market right now. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I'm sure eventually we're gonna get some show news on this one because it seems like it oh yeah, be perfect for uh, adaptation. And I've got all them first, second, third, fourth, fifth prints <laughs> of issue one. I have them all. Nice. All right. After that, from Boom Studios, we have House of Slaughter issue number 12, The Butcher Returns part two. This cover is fucking fire, dude. Uh, yeah, this cover is pretty good. Um, so this is the story where we are continuing to um, follow Jace and the kids that he has saved that would normally go to... Uh, the order of St. George. Gotcha. And um, of course we are, it seems like this phase of the slaughter verse um, is a uh, focus on some of the baddies, not being the monsters that are created, but the monsters that are within the order. Mm. So um, we're going to have to see how, uh, how Jace is able to protect what's, you know, what he's got going on with the kids and everything against some of the white masks that will be coming from mm. the order. Interesting. Uh, yes. Uh, the first, uh, this is part two of the third arc of the series. Uh, first issue was good. Um, I think we're back on track to where we were with the first arc. So um, we got that, that team back together again. So all right, looking forward to it. Dope. All right, our last book of the night and may or may not be on the show. It's dependent on how good it is because the first issue was artistically stunning, right? Stunning, stunning. But the story was, um, I wouldn't say flat, but I just, okay. You know, you know what I mean? And re- really the only reason why I'm giving issue two a pull is because George Jimenez is on the artwork and he's just, He's just a freaking glot, you know, dude. G G G A W D or glot. I don't know. I don't know how to it. Um, he's just good, man. And so, Mark Miller, or how do you say it? It's Millar. Millar. Mark Millar. He says his own name wrong. Okay, <laughs> Mark Millar. Um, I feel like is definitely being carried by Jorge. Um, so let's see if that can be picked up. If the writing can get picked up, this probably will be my last issue of Nemesis. If that's the case, if it's still being kind of carried by Jimenez, which again, uh, you know, this could be, I, I would love for this to be just a wordless book. I, I think that would, <laughs> pff, I'd pick up the whole, uh, the whole thing, but um, we'll yep. see. It's, you know, it, it's a bad, it's a bad version of Batman, you know, and he's a super billionaire who likes to kill cops. So Good. if that's your cup of tea, then there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this week's new comic book day video for the week of February 15th. Let us know down in the comments, what are you picking up today? Uh, What are you going to read first? And what's your potential pick of the week? And also let us know, did we miss anything? If you didn't notice, no DC books. No DC books, because we're just not that interested. Um, I choked down the first three tie-ins for Lazarus. I'm not doing (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's that's been rough uh but yeah let us know did we miss anything are we dumb for not picking up small thing let us know um as always make sure to smash that subscribe button ring that bell and give us a like uh, it would be greatly appreciated it'll help us out on the algorithms get this message out the two fat guys bullets 
is one of the premier, if not the best, YouTube channels for comic books and all nerddom in general. So make sure to do that. Uh, we'll catch you guys live this Sunday, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time, PM. I always miss that, 8 o'clock PM Central Standard Time, uh, where we'll talk about all these books and review them all. Come, you know, come hang out, chat with us, crack a beer, ask us questions. We love engaging with y'all. That's the other reason why we do this. Uh, because we want to build an environment where everybody can talk and, and just discuss our hobby in a positive way. Um, so we will see you guys live this Sunday. So as always, bam, read more comics. Nope. Gosh, darn it. It's not. I don't do that. As always, fam, be kind to one another and read more comics later.